When creating reactions for your Ableton scripts, it's important that you're able to find out specific pieces of data coming from your Ableton session. Let's say you want to use an event in your reaction, but you're unsure about the exact times that the event happens. Does the event only happen at one time? Or are there multiple times when the event can happen? Or maybe you want to know what the data value of a parameter is. All Ableton parameters have data values which, depending on the type of parameter, can be a numerical value, a text string, or as with the back to arrangement button, true or false, depending on its current state. In this tutorial, I'm going to show you how, with reactions, you can use the log to visually see when an event happens and the data value of an Ableton parameter. The log works by monitoring Ableton Live's own log.txt file. So the first thing to do is to make sure that you have this set up correctly. To do this, open the settings menu. If you haven't done so already, select the location of your Ableton Live installation. Then select the live version. The log.txt location should be automatically populated. If it isn't, you can use the browse button to manually find it. Whenever you update Ableton Live to a new version, the location of the log.txt file changes. For the log to continue working, you will just need to come in here and set the live version to the one that you're using. In Ableton, I currently have the arrangement playing. If I switch to session view and start playback of the clip in there, the clip overrides the arrangement and the back to arrangement button becomes active. The arrangement view is now being overridden by the session view. Clicking the back to arranger button will stop the clip and return to the arrangement. Corresponding to this, in Control Surface Studio, there is a live object model event called songs back to arranger value has changed. I want to find out if this event happens only when back to arrangement becomes active or does it also happen when I click the button and return to the arrangement again. To find out, I'll add this event to my listeners section which means that the reaction will now listen for this event to happen in Ableton. And to actually see when this event happens, I'm going to display some text in the log. To do this, I need to go down to the Action Blocks Action section, open the Action menu, go to Script, then select the Display a Value in CSS Log option. This action has one parameter called value to display, where I can enter the text that I want to display when the listener event happens. I'll enter the text, it worked. I'll install this into Ableton and refresh my session. When I start the clip in Ableton and the back to arrangement button appears, the it worked text is displayed in the log. And when I click the button, the text displays in the log again. This tells me that the event happens at two points. When the back to arrangement button becomes active and also when the button is clicked to return to the original arrangement. So far we have displayed some static text when an event happens. 
But what if you want to know what the value of an Ableton parameter is when an event happens? Instead of displaying static text, Reactions gives you the ability to select hundreds of Ableton's parameter values, which can be displayed in the log. This is done using the arrow menu on the right of the value to display action parameter. For this example, when the back to arranger event happens, I want to see what the value of the back to arranger button is. I can select the back to arranger value by going to live object model, song, and then selecting back to arranger. I'll install this update into Ableton and reload my Ableton session. Now, when I start the clip and Back to Arranger becomes active, it displays the value true in the log. And when it's deactivated, it displays the value false. And you don't have to just use the value which is related to the listener event. You can select anything which is available in the menu. Instead of displaying the back to arranger value in the log, I'll display the output meter level for track one. This time, when the Back to Arranger button becomes active, the value of the output meter level will be displayed. In this reaction, I have three event listeners. Track 1's name value has changed, Track 1's mute value has changed, and Track 1's solo value has changed. This means that the reaction will run when any of these events happen in my session. If I want to know which event actually fired the reaction, how can I do this? To find this out, you can use the listener number value it will return the listener number that called the reaction. The listener number is the order number within the listener section starting from 1. So track 1's name value has changed is number 1, track 1's mute value has changed is number 2, and track 1's solo value has changed is number 3. I'll install this into Ableton and reload the session. When each event happens, you can see its order number appears in the CSS log. A useful way to use this is to add a condition in the action block, which checks the listener before running its action. In the action block, I'll add a condition which checks that the listener number is 2. I'll change the value to display to show the text listener2 was fired. Now, due to the condition, the text will only display if listener number is 2. I'll install this into Ableton and reload my session. I'll now make the different events happen. You can see that the message is only displayed in the log when the tracks mute button is pressed.
As Control Surface Studio constantly monitors Ableton Live's log.txt file, the larger that this file becomes, the more processing the software has to do in order to monitor the file. So we recommend that you clear the log as often as possible. This is done by simply clicking the clear log button at the bottom of the log. Utilising the log to display data when building your reactions is a powerful way to understand what's going on within Ableton and your script. Hopefully this will help you when you're building your own custom MIDI controller functionality for Ableton. Please like this video and subscribe for more videos on reactions and building MIDI controller scripts for Ableton Live. Thank you.